weeks. So um, as I'm going through this, multiple things have changed. So uh, I think we're, we're doing this at, at, at a good time because we kind of have the framework and now we have some real life feedback as a lot of our members and I'm sure that uh, your members and your businesses here that are on the call today have gone through this process or at least started this process as well. So the feedback I receive from you is, is crucial um, to us as we feed in uh, to our team down at, at headquarters as um, they are already starting and debating the next phase of this legislation, which I can touch on uh, towards, towards the end. But uh, there's a lot of questions on this. So I'm going to do my best to kind of give you the overview. And I will stress um, two things from the start. Number one is I apologize if there's any background noise. Um, my wife is a first grade teacher and is uh, teaching her class in a couple of rooms over uh, <laughs> from where, where I'm sitting now. And uh, two, um, it is very important that you take the information that, that you get today and all the information that you're, you're getting um, from all over the place, but you have to make sure that these programs that we're gonna talk about is right for your business, your personal business, your, your independent business. It is, there's no fix, uh, one size fits all for any business as you know. So we just wanna make sure, and I'll stress this a couple times during the presentation, that um, you wanna make sure that um, what program that you are looking at, we're going to make sure it is right for you because we do not want to see businesses taking on additional debt at the worst possible time. So uh, with that, we're going to give this a start. I have a PowerPoint here. Uh, you will see that uh, while we go through it, I'm going to see things that I've already changed uh, from when I originally put this PowerPoint together, and I'll make sure to highlight on that. Also, after this call, after this call, I'm going to be uh, ascending your chamber a number of resources. Uh, so all the information that I'm um, going to be presenting is in written form uh, for you. Uh, so uh, all this will be uh, provided to you after the fact. There's a lot of formulas and, 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 and information that we break down in these, what we call them one pagers. Um, I'm gonna be providing a small business guide and checklist um, for the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. I'm going to be providing a guide on the economic injury disaster loans. I'm going to be providing a guide on the uh, employee retention tax credit. And I'm going to be providing a guide on the paid leave programs. So all these things we're going to touch on, but uh, these are detailed guides. Our uh, small business guide and checklist has been shared over a million times. Uh, people like Mark Cuban, um, Marco Rubio, who is uh, the author, he's a senator who authored the CARES Act uses this, um, this sheet to give to his constituents to help explain the legislation. Um, the Small Business Administration, certain district offices uh, that I've shared this with have, have retweeted it out as a good example of, of what to follow. So these are all uh, great resources that we're updating daily. Uh, so I will send you my updated list and the uschamber.com has a continuing updated list. So if we can start the... Um, slideshow here. See if, if you could help me and go to the next one. Sure, Steve. Just give me one moment here yeah. and I'll... Sorry about that. Everyone's got a different setup and I'm, this is the first one I've used on this setup, uh, this platform. All right. So um, this, I want to do a quick overview on what the CARES package is. So um, we're, we're doing this, uh, we're calling this phase three. So phase one was about three weeks ago um, at the beginning of this crisis. And that was an $8.3 billion package, but only had about $7 million in disaster relief uh, for small businesses. So obviously that was not enough as this crisis moved forward. So then they had a phase two, which mostly focused on the food services industries, giving them some type of relief and uh, paid leave requirements. Now, these paid leave requirements are now law. They, they, they went into effect on April 1st. So I ask if, you are, if you're an employer um, that you, you familiar, familiarize yourself with these uh, leave acts. I have a nice sheet on that. Um, you know, the key numbers, if, if you have 50 or below, uh, you know, you have to do certain things different. If you have 500 employees or below, up to 50, you have to do, um, 
something different. So these are all things that you should be aware of. And again, I'm happy to take questions on that and we'll touch on it a little bit further. So now we're into phase three, and that's this $2 trillion package that we're talking about today. That's the CARES Act. Uh, within this package, there are numerous things, not just for the business community, but for hospitals, for education, um, and individual taxpayers as well. As most of you know, um, the automatic payments to individuals at $1,200 per individual, $2,400 uh, for joint employers, plus $500, I'm joint returns, sorry, and uh, $500 uh, per child. Um, there's a phase with a lot of these things. There's all equations and phases in and up to this and uh, part of that. So again, once your income goes above $75,000 for an individual, uh, you receive less of the $2,400 up to $100,000 within your salary. Um, unemployment, as you know, across the country, uh, especially in, in New York, is just through the roof. Um, so uh, the federal government has, has come in within the CARES Act and they've, they've given it up to $600 per week on top of the regular state benefit that you, that you would receive. Um, and that is done through your unemployment offices, your state, your local unemployment offices, that is, is what's done. We go to the next slide, please. So we kind of break this down into uh, provisions that uh, affect all employers, some uh, provisions only affect the larger employers, and then we're going to spend the majority of our time today talking about the provisions that affect the small businesses, the self-employed, the independent contractors, and the nonprofits uh, here. And that's going to be your Paycheck Protection Program and your idle loans, which is your small business um, economic injury disaster loans. Um, we're going to spend the majority of our time on that, but I do want to touch on parts of the CARES Act that affects all employers, which is the next slide, please. So for all employers, now again, you're going to want to sit down with, um, when you're going through your taxes at the end of the year, you're going to, want to sit down with your tax professionals because there's a whole bunch of information that you're going to need to provide um, that came through the CARES Act and you'll see it develop. We just want to give you a quick overview of what that's going to look like. Again, the devil's in the details. You want to make sure that you're following it for your particular business, um, but there is a delay in the payroll taxes, the Social Security, between now and now was it probably started um, about March 15th, March 16th, around that area now, um, until the first of the year. So 50% of those will be of those payroll taxes will be due on 12-31-21, and then the remainder of that balance will be due on 12-31-22. So the purpose of this is to give businesses liquidity and, and extra cash flow at the height of this crisis, right when it started, right when we're into it right now, delaying this payroll tax kind of gives you more money into the program. As we move forward, when I talk about the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, if you get loans forgiven under that, uh, you, you cannot do the payroll tax delay for as long. Again, there's a formula, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, lay that out for you. Um, there's also a number of other tax changes, different things that you can do, carrybacks, past five years. Again, I have the information here. We have more detailed information on that. But again, we are stressing, we're just giving you the, the, the 10,000 view height on the legislation itself. But when you are working uh, to do your taxes, you want to work with your tax professional to make sure that everything is lined up correctly because we don't want to see anybody get penalized. We can go to the next slide, please. So again, for all employees, there's this employee retention credit. Now this was used a lot more when this originally, when this crisis originally started in March and early April. I think a lot of employers that um, were eligible for this have already utilized this. But again, I wanted to put this out there. This is a resource that is there. We have a detailed, um, one page document that I'm going to be providing with you that gives a little more information on this employee intention uh, credit. Um, again, this is all in the CARES Act itself. It's all geared to trying to keep people on the payroll, keep your business open for as long as possible. Um, so this has to do with that. Again, there's a formula here. 
Um, and um, these are the highlights here. I won't read it. I know you can see the screen here, but um, again, this is information that I will be sending, but more people were utilizing this early on. So you may uh, still be qualified for this. You want to look into that, but I think the next couple of programs are going to be um, uh, a little more timely and the ones that you're probably working on right now as we speak. We go to the next slide, please. So mid and large size employers. So for this CARES Act, a small business, quote unquote, small business for this program is 500 employees and below. So any company, any business that has 500 employees or below, so one to 500, you are considered a quote unquote, small business for this legislation. These mid size and larger employers, um, that is 501 and above. That's what this program is talking about. So again, I'm going to spend the majority of my time on the small business uh, community because I, I believe that has um, more people that are affected, but I'm happy to, to touch on this a little bit for the larger things. There's different programs that these mid-size and larger employees can apply for. And these are done through the Department of Treasury. These are for loan guarantees and, and federal reserve credits. So again, these are your larger businesses. You're going to want to work with the Treasury Department. There are provisions within this, uh, restrictions on stock buybacks and executive compensation. Um, this is going to be done uh, through the Federal Reserve. Um, they still haven't really clarified too much on what this is. So if you are um, a larger employer, you're looking for additional information on this, uh, feel free to ask me any questions and reach out to us at the Chamber. But you're going to work through the Treasury Department and through the, um, uh, the Federal Reserve. And we are still uh, keeping an eye on this program because we're starting to get questions that there isn't that much clarification on how exactly this process works for these larger uh, companies. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so here is what we came here for. The majority, I'm sure, that you are working with. This is for the small business community that self-employ, the independent contractors, and the nonprofit community with everybody who has a company of 500 and below. Those are the people that are eligible for this Paycheck Protection Program. Now, I'm, there is a ton of information out there on this. I'm going to go over the highlights the way it was intended. Then I want to talk about, kind of go off script here and talk about what we are hearing, the feedback um, that we were hearing over the last two weeks of how this has rolled out. Um, I, I want to go over and then I want to hear um, back from your experiences as well. So this Paycheck Protection Program is $349 billion in loans for small businesses with 500 or fewer. Uh, for 501c3s, which is the majority of your nonprofit community, self-employed, sole proprietors, and independent contractors. Now, as of um, April 10th, um, uh, so last, last uh, April 10th, all these individuals, all these groups are now eligible. They originally rolled out on April 3rd, Friday, April 3rd. It was just the small business communities, the nonprofits, and the sole proprietors. Now your independent contractors and your self-employed can apply for this program as well. Everybody is eligible if you're 500 or below at this time. So this program is, I want to stress here, this is the program that is going, that if you do it correctly, the loan is going to turn into a grant. That is the huge advantage for this program because it's going to give you some relief. If you bring back your employees, if you keep your payroll up, and again, I'm going to go through the program itself, the information I'm talking about today for this Paycheck Protection Program will turn into a grant. Whereas the next program we're going to talk to about that's through the Small Business Administration is more of a traditional loan. So we want to make sure there's no there's been a lot of confusion between the two. So I want to make that crystal clear that the Paycheck Protection Program is designed for a loan to turn into a forgivable grant. Um, also, through the Paycheck Protection Program, you are going to work with your local lender for this. You do not work with the SBA, the Small Business Administration, for this program. You're going to work with your local lender to go through to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. Again, who is eligible for this? 
a small business with fewer than 500 employees, um, a small a 501c3 with fewer than 500 employees. Uh, for my chamber friends, employees um, on the call here, um, unfortunately, 501 sixes, which is the majority of the chambers, are not included. You are not eligible for the Paycheck Protection Program. I'm happy to talk about what the U.S. Chamber is advocating for to try to change that um, down the line here. Uh, any individual open, uh, operates a sole proprietor is eligible. If you're an independent contractor, you are eligible. If you're self-employed, you carry on a trade or business, you're eligible. Um, tribal businesses are also eligible, and there are certain veterans organizations are eligible, and that's a 501c19 um, are eligible. Um, again, your 500 employee threshold, that includes all employees, your part-time employees, uh, your full-time employees, or any other employee status that you have. That what builds up to the cap. So if you're uh, interested in the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, you're going to work with your local lender for this. So you're going to sit down with your local bank, and you're going to talk to them, and you're going to apply through them. So we can talk about that experience in a second. But what they're going to ask you, the first question is, you have to prove that you're eligible for this loan. So you're going to say, um, you know, I have 500 or fewer. Here's, here's my thing. And because of the current economic situations, I need to apply for this program. That's the first step. Um, the, this, this loan program is designed to retain workers, to maintain your payroll. So 75% of the money that you can receive through the Paycheck Protection Program has to go towards retaining your payroll. We're going to talk about that as well. But you can also use the, the remaining 25% for your mortgage payments, for your lease payments, and your utilities payments. Um, Independent contractors, sole proprietors, and self-employed individuals, they're going to look for some additional information as well. Um, that's why you need to sit down and meet with your, with your local bank. You're going to have to provide some additional information, some tax forms, uh, like 1099 information, stuff like that. What your lender is not going to be looking for, you do not have to put up a personal guarantee for this loan. Uh, no collateral is required for this loan as well. And uh, you do not have to show that you tried to get credit elsewhere. A lot of uh, SBA um, loans, they first require that you go somewhere else first to be eligible. That provision has been waived for the Paycheck Protection Program. So again, there's a formula here, and it, you know, it, it talks about it a little bit here in, in, in my slides, but just to give you the, the highlights is loans can be up to two and a half times the borrower's average monthly payroll costs not to exceed $10 million. So there's a formula, which I'm going to provide you, um, which shows you what is included payroll costs, which is your salaries, your wages, your commissions, your payment of cash, kit, cash tips, uh, payment of any vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, um, allowances for any separation, payments required for provisions of group health care benefits, including your insurance premiums, payment of any retirement benefit, and payment of any state or local assessed on the compensation of the employee. That's your quote unquote included payroll cost. You're going to subtract that uh, for your excluded payroll costs. And just uh, again, it's much easier when it's right in front of you here. And, and um, on the next slide will show you where you can find that real easy. Um, but any salary over $100,000 is not included in your uh, payroll cost. So if you have an employee who makes $125,000, you're only going to be able to get credit up to that $100,000 mark. And uh, also, if you have any employees whose principal place of residence is outside the United States, you cannot use their salaries um, as part of your included payroll costs. So um, if you go to the next slide here, so this is this is this um, uh, small business guy checklist. There's the website here that you want to click on. There's a beautiful formula here. This is that sheet I was telling you about that's been shared over a billion times. It has that equation right there for you, real easy to follow um, that you want to go um, to, to look at. Um, 
How to make this loan forgiven? Again, that's the most important. That's the best part of the Paycheck Protection Program is how to turn this loan into a grant. So a borrower is eligible for loan forgiveness equal to the amount the borrower spent on the following items during the eight week period beginning on the date of the origination of the loan. So when you get this loan, the eight weeks starts. And if you're using that money, that loan, for its payroll costs, bringing people back. So if you had to lay off five employees, you um, decide you're gonna bring them back, you put, them in there, you put their salaries into the equation for what you're gonna receive as a loan. If you keep them on uh, until May 3rd, I mean June 30th, during that eight weeks period, all that money that you are spending, that loan that you're receiving to make sure you can pay them, that will be forgiven. If you can also use that 25% of that uh, money to pay off your mortgage, to pay off your rent or leasing agreements, and to pay for your utilities. Again, it's a formula. So I want to stress, I want to take a second here to stress, you want to make sure that this program is right for your particular business, because we don't want to see people bring people back on the payroll Say they, they uh, had to lay off 10 people. They bring back all 10 people. They get accepted for PPP. They bring these people back, but then your business is suffering two weeks later and you, you just, you can't, you can't keep them on. You're gonna have to lay them off. Again, the problem is if you lay off five of the 10, you're only gonna be eligible for the loan to be forgiven for the five that you kept the whole time. The five that you had to lay off again Unfortunately, you're going to be responsible uh, for a portion of that loan to repay. So again, you're going to be taking on additional debt at, at one of the worst possible times. So you want to make sure going forward when you sit down with your local lender that this is the, the right program. So if, if, can we go to the slide previous to this one? Thank you. Again, so here are the, the highlights here, um, how it was originally written up. Then I'm going to talk about uh, real quickly of what we're actually hearing at this point this week. So it was a $350 billion for loans for small businesses. Uh, it's equal to two and a half months of your average payroll or $10 million. Again, I gave you what they, how they come up with that formula. Uh, it's done by your local and national lenders. Uh, there is no minimal requirements. There's no collateral and no personal guarantees. Loans convert to grants equal to the amount spent on payroll, rent, interest, and mortgage payments and utilities for the eight weeks. However, that has changed since I originally, since we originally crafted this thing. 75% needs to be spent on payroll. The 25% can be used on rent, interest, mortgage, and utilities. Uh, the loan forgiveness is reduced proportionally if the employer reduces the number of employees. As I mentioned, if you have to end up laying people off during this eight weeks, you're not going to get that, that full um, credit because you had to lay them off. So you're going to take on additional debt. Um, it's reduced by more than 25%. As you can see, there's, there's a uh, thing here. Um, now, unfortunately, since we are going through this program, um, there has been a hundred and as of Friday, it was $168 billion in requests already for the Paycheck Protection Program. So they are going to run out of money uh, for the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, there's also, they, they put a cap on what independent contractors can receive. The maximum is around $20,000. And you're gonna wanna sit down with your, independent, uh, with your local lender to go through that. Um, the large businesses, the bigger businesses that have more of the bandwidth to be able to jump on this right away, majority of them have already got in their requests. So now we're seeing more of these smaller loans through the Paycheck Protection Program, which um, we're, we're seeing there's been a backlog on them because there's so many and they're smaller loans. Um, banks are having a hard time processing them. Also, we are finding that if uh, we are recommending if you have a previous relationship with a bank, a local bank, work with them because banks, they are getting bombarded with requests for this program. They are prioritizing their clients first. They are prioritizing 
the people that they already have established relationships with. There's nothing in this law that says you have to have a previous relationship to get a loan through a bank, um, but, but because there are so many, we are finding every day that uh, banks are going with the people they already know that they already have relationships with. And that's why we're finding it's very difficult for some of these independent contractors, um, these sole proprietors to get, to, to, to get these loans. Um, banks are opening up once they're catching up. They are processing these loans for people that they didn't have these previous relationships with. Um, but if you have a previous relationship with a bank, go to them first because they already have your information. There's other um, federal uh, banking laws that talk that they have to prove. You have to know who you're giving your, your money to, who you're lending money to. You know, there's uh, because of these banking acts. So if they already know you, it's easier for them to move through these things. So that is one of the, uh, the real-time feedback that we are getting. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. And again, everything that I'm talking about here is, is much clearer, and it's right in front of you on a nice four-page document here, which you can find at that website here. I'm also going to be sending it uh, to your chamber after this call. Uh, next document, please. Go to the next slide. Uh, one back, please. Now, this is the other program that you're hearing the most about. And this is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, this is what is done through the Small Business Administration. Again, uh, the PPP, that is done through your local lender. The Small Business Economic Injury Disaster Loan, um, that is, is done through the Small Business Administration. Again, businesses with fewer than 500 employees are eligible for this. So proprietors are eligible, independent contractors, and most private nonprofits, 500 and below, are eligible for this. Also, there's a lot of confusion over this, but Chambers of Commerce C6s are eligible for this. However, we are having a number of issues getting that um, through, but they are eligible, and we're working um, with the, uh, the SBA administrator to kind of clear up language on that. This is more of a traditional loan the SBA uh, Injury Disaster Loan. This is a program that was already in place before this crisis took place. This is a 60-year-old program um, that it's more for rebuilding. So this was not um, traditionally used for an immediate flux of cash. This was usually used after a hurricane, a, a natural disaster to help people recover. So the SBA has had a terrible time trying to get this money out um, because the system wasn't really sent out to get the money out uh, immediately. There's two parts of this that I'd like to, to talk on. There's the emergency grant. Um, again, this is a grant part of it that um, up to $10,000 can be forgiven if, if you um, are keeping on your payroll, uh, keeping on your employees. When we, this originally came out, we thought it was a $10,000 grant. Now, it, during the practice, we are told that it's up to $10,000 and it's a $1,000 credit for each employee. So if you only have seven employees to start, the maximum you're gonna be able to receive is the $7,000. The original came out and told us that you apply and within three days you'll have this emergency funds. They have completely backed off on that. They will not even give us a time uh, when, they, when this money will be processed and you will get into the hands of the small business. So please, uh, you're gonna have to waive that three day that was originally what they were saying. That has not been the practice. We have not found that across the country. Um, the uh, the loan itself, I, I want to I want to touch on. Uh, it's again, this is more of a traditional loan. Again, originally the maximum idle, we're calling it idle. It's the economic injury disaster loan. It was a two million dollar working capital loan at a rate of 3.75% for businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits up to a 30 year term. Uh, payments for this loan were deferred for a year. Up to $200,000 can be approved without a personal guarantee. Approvals can be based on credit score and no first year tax returns were required. Borrowers do not have to prove they went elsewhere for credit. Again, traditional SBA loans require that. That's been waived. 
No collateral is required for loans of $25,000 or less. For loans of more than $25,000, general security interest in business assets will be used for collateral instead of real estate, and borrowers must allow the SBA to review their tax record. Now, that was how the, the program was set up, and that was how it was passed, and that's how it, it rolled out. However, we are hearing, I want to give you the real-time information. Um, because the SBA disaster loans was not set up originally for a quick tax relief, um, there's a number of problems. Also, there, this program, people started applying for this around March 16th. The average loan request was $200,000. So there is not going to be enough money in this program for people to continue to do that. So what the SBA decided on an administrative level is they're trying to give as much, uh, trying to meet as many people as possible. Um, so they're spreading the money out, which means they've now made a cap. So before, again, when it was originally written, there was a $2 million, up to $2 million working rate. It's now a $25,000 cap, major change. Um, so we wanna make sure people are aware of that uh, right away because they're running into that. Now, we absolutely think Congress is going to get together and they are going to put additional funds in for both the Paycheck Protection Program and the SBA injury disaster loans. However, um, this needs to be done unanimously. So only one member of Congress, because they're not there, they can, they can do things unanimously, but if one member of Congress throws a wrench in that, it stalls. So we, we thought that additional funds were going to go into both of these programs. Last Thursday, that stalled. Last Friday, that stalled. Nothing happened yesterday. So we're hoping as more and more businesses are reaching out to their congressional delegation to let them know we need these programs, we need this to stay afloat, um, that they will hopefully this week raise the cap, raise the money on both of these Try to get more uh, people out. So let me take a breath there. I think I've been going for 30 minutes here, and I know it's a lot of information. Um, I want to see if I can take some questions for you. Again, everything that I've laid out today, I have in written form, which I will send out, uh, and you, you can go through. But I want to add in the real life, the uh, real time information that we are receiving, which is a little different from what was originally told to us. So I want to get that information to you as well. And if we have time after, maybe I can hit on what we're hearing on uh, the next phase of this. Steve, some questions came up in the chat room. So if you'd like, I can kind of go through some of those. Yes, um, please. Okay, great. Um, thank you again, Steve. Um, so just to facilitate some of these questions, what I'll do is I'll start in order of questions asked. And um, when your question is asked, please feel free to chime in. Just remember to mute, unmute while you are speaking and mute while others are speaking. So the first question I see here is back earlier in the presentation for unemployment, does the, six, um, the $600 plus ends when an employee can return to work? What is meant by can in this definition? It's when you're recalled. So if the employer, if you recall your people, um, and, and it's because we've already run into this, where people are being recalled to work, but with the addition, with the state employee, uh, the state unemployment plus the additional federal $600, some people are making more money on unemployment or close to it, so they want to stay home. But you're only eligible for that as long as your employer is telling you you have to, you're, you're still unemployed. Once you're called back, technically you're not eligible for that $600 anymore. Okay, great. The next question was, can you qualify for Paycheck Protection Program if your company is still working? Yes, you can, absolutely. Um, it, it's all about retaining your um, employees. So if you need help and, and you think that you're going to be able to retain them um, for that eight-week period, uh, you may want to look into that. Again, it's, it's different for each business, so you want to sit down uh, with your local lender for the Paycheck Protection Program. But this is something that um, it can be for eight weeks, 
um, all those expenses can be forgiven. So it may be something you want to look at. And you want to get in the queue as soon as possible. Uh, again, there is a big backlog on this. So if this is something you're interested with, um, I, I, I recommend that you try to jump on it as soon as possible. Okay, and the next question was, for average payroll, can, can do we take our 2019 wages and use two and a half months of that figure? Yes, you, got, you have to use um, from the previous year's quarter. So you look back at the same time frame from last year at this time and, and use that salary up to $100,000. So if you have employees that are making more than $100,000, anything above that um, is, not, is not calculated within this. Thanks, Steve. And just a reminder to participants, please feel free to chime in. The next question was, can these dates change dependent on the status of our state and country? If we are still on pause into May or longer, can the dates get extended or changed? Likely my business will not be open and running fully until later into May or at least until the pause is done. Yes, we, we do. Um, uh, because they can, uh, they're going to be coming back and talking about the next full phase. One of the things they're asking us is what works and what doesn't and um, you know, what we're hearing and what not. So I do expect things to, to change in the next phase. Can I step in for a second? Thank you. Since that was my question, I just wanna make sure I clarify because typing it out doesn't always come out right there. Um, uh, so I had read previously that employees would have to be hired back, all of your employees by April 26th for that PPP. And those are kind of the dates I'm worried about is that, you know, running a childcare business, likely that's not going to happen, but I don't wanna incur more debt, even though it's a good rate and everything on the PPP. Those are the dates I'm wondering if that will be flexible. Yes, no, that, and that's exactly what you need okay. to do. You wanna make sure that it's right for your particular business. Um, there is a formula for seasonal employees, but um, that, I don't think your business would qualify for that as well, but I do want to point that out. There's a different formula for seasonal employees because we're starting to hear from them. Um, you know, people that do um, stuff just in the summertime, they're starting to gear up and they wouldn't be up and running by April 25th right. either. Um, right. so these are things that they're going to be looking at. And again, it starts on the date of the, the, the loan. Uh, so, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, the next question is, you stress the end on June 30th. Owners currently have no employees. If we take the loan mid to late May to reopen in mid May and June, the eight weeks goes beyond June 30th. What happens then? This is critical for all medical professionals in the food industry who are shut now. Correct. The formula itself is for eight weeks. So um, it's, it's the, the clock starts on the eight weeks um, uh, once you get the loan itself. The June 30th deadline is just an additional kind of trap that they put in there because they don't want to see um, people that got the original loans and then immediately once the eight weeks is up, they drop them again. It kind of defeats the purpose of, they're trying to keep people on the payroll as long as possible. So it's kind of two, two separate things. When this originally started, you know, two and a half, three weeks ago, June 30th was father and father out. Now as we move forward to June 30th, we're gonna run into that more and more. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they change that uh, deadline as well. But uh, it's, it's the eight weeks when you have the program that, that you're showing, it's for those eight weeks, that is what um, you're going to be uh, um, used on what, what your actual payroll costs, your mortgages and stuff like that. That's what can be forgiven. 
during the eight weeks starting when you get the loan. So I know it's confusing, but the June 30th is just, you have to keep people on until that date at a minimum as well. Um, but if your eight weeks goes after that, you've got to keep them on for eight weeks total, um, no matter when you get the loan, because you can apply for this loan up till January. Okay, so it looks like there was a follow-up question on that. Would you advise waiting for timing of the loan for maximum forgiveness if you are currently closed and do not want a loan? Yes, I, I, I have to stress, I, I, I don't want to advise independent, individual um, situations. Again, I, I don't know your business, so I don't want to, you know, say this is right for you because, I, I, you know, I, I have no idea. Um, what's right for your particular business. However, again, you want to sit down with your local lender and make sure this program is right, especially if you're going into it wanting it to become a grant instead of the, a traditional loan um, because you don't want to take on additional debt. So all I can recommend is you take this information and you meet with your local lender and see if it's right for your business. Um, I'm hesitant of giving anybody <laughs> advice on what loan they should take and what not, not knowing your business. So. Sure. Thank you, Steve. So under the EIDL loan, the application doesn't give you an option for how much you are requesting. If they try to give more, then um, can you send it back if you only want the $10,000 grant? Yes, you can apply. You can apply just for the $10,000, up to $10,000 grant as well. Uh, there is no minimum uh, requirement uh, for this. Uh, but the emergency grant it's, it's up to $10,000 and the maximum is $1,000 per employee. So if you have 10 employees, you can get the full $10,000, but if you only have five employees, the maximum you're gonna receive is the $5,000. And again, um, just for the real time background on this, this quote unquote emergency funding, we are seeing it being delayed. Some have waited two weeks. They're originally supposed to get it within three days. Um, so you want to factor that in. Unfortunately, you want to factor that timing into this as well. Um, you are allowed to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program and an EIDL loan. You can do both. Um, if you get um, the paycheck, or you get approved for the Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL loan and the emergency grant, just so you know, they will deduct that up to $10,000 from what's forgivable from your Paycheck Protection Program because it's supposed to go to the same thing. But you are, I get that question a lot, and you can apply for both. Okay, so this next question has two parts. Um, one is can 1099 employees count or just W 2 employees? And part two is I'm interested also if owners of a company can qualify for the PPP if they have no employees and how, how do the percentages apply if the owner does qualify? Yes, um, the, the first part, the 1099s, you can apply. Um, you, you, you can uh, make them eligible. Again, you're gonna wanna sit down with the lender to make sure that, um, that they're not being counted somewhere else under somebody else as well, but if you, 1099s can apply. And the Second question, remind me what the second question was. Sure, so they were interested also if owners of a company can qualify for the PPP if they have no employees and how do the percentages apply if the owner does qualify? Yes, you can, uh, especially if you give yourself a salary up to $100,000, uh, you, you, you can apply as, a, as, as an individual. Um, you have to show that you were in business before this crisis. We've run into that. Um, they don't want this to be a starter startup. So if, if you were in business be, be, before this, you can apply um, as a sole proprietor. Uh, you are eligible. Um, and for the salary, it is up to $100,000. Um, so um, you, you can apply again. You're going to work with your local lender on that, but you are eligible. Some of these 
smaller loans, though, those are the ones that are, are taking additional time now um, because the backlog from all the, the bigger loans um, are just starting to creep out now. So we are, unfortunately, we are hearing some, some stories of the, the, the sole proprietors, the self-employed, the smaller, smaller one or two uh, people, they are, it is being delayed a little bit. So again, uh, if you're interested in this, you want to get with your local lender, you want to get, you want to get in the queue. Great, thank you. The next question is for the dollar amount during the eight weeks, is the is that the payroll dates or the actual hours worked? Yeah, it would be um, it's the sum of the payments of any compensation. So it's the during the eight weeks, it's the sum of any compensation compensation with employers, employees, so any salary, wage, commission, or compensa similar compensation, any payment of cash tip or equivalent, payment of vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowances for uh, dismissal or separation, any payment required for provisions to the group health care benefits, including insurance premiums, any payment towards uh, retirement benefit, and any payment to state or local tax assess on the compensation of the employees. So anything you're paying during those eight weeks, that's what is eligible. Any payment towards those eight weeks through any of those things is what they're talking about. Okay. The next one is, any idea when the SBA will issue the final regulations on forgiveness? Two local banks yesterday said they really have no idea how the forgiveness will look, besides the limited info we have. Yes, we, we are working at the highest levels. We are working with the SBA administrator. Our president, Suzanne Clark, has been reaching out to them because uh, we are hearing this every day. So April 1st, this program went live. And uh, around, so say your bank opens at 8 a.m. on April 1st, uh, 4.30 in the morning is when a lot of these regulations started coming into the banks. So uh, these banks are in a tough situation. They're, they're trying to get this information out, but they're still getting these final regulations in. Uh, so unfortunately, we have not been able to pin down the SBA on timeframes on, 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 this, on this stuff. Um, we're, we're, we're learning as we go, unfortunately, because it, it's almost depends on where you are, or which SBA administrator you get is how things are being processed or which banks you're going through of how things are being processed. So uh, we're looking for clearer guidelines and that is something that we continue to work on an administrative level. Um, and we, we hope they'll be able to straighten this out as soon as possible, but I can't give you a timeline on that. We, we've been working on this for at least two weeks now. Sure, thank you. The next question is just following up on the earlier question about the 1099 employees and if they count as full-time equivalents. Are you there, Steve? I lost you there. We can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I lost you there for a second. I, my uh, thing went out. I did not hear the question. Sorry. No worries. That question was, um, do the 1099 employees count as full-time equivalents? 1099, they do count, um, but you're going to have to show some additional information. So on the, um, I, I don't have that right in front of me, but on the, uh, that, that, sheet um, that uh, we, we have the link to. Uh, you do have to show some additional information uh, for the 1099s. Uh, you will have to provide that. Okay. And 
where do we find details for the sick leave rules for employees who wish to take sick leave because their child does not have school or they do not have child care? Do employees have to give notice of these of this option to all employees? Um, they do have to. They, they do have to provide this. It is. It is law now. The Department of Labor, the U.S. Department of Labor, has this information on their website, which will break it down. And I will also send you a sheet. It's called the Paid Leave Programs Employer Guide. So if you're an employer, um, this breaks it down. Um, what's exempt? Uh, what is included in the paid sick leave? What's included in the Me uh, Family Medical Leave Act? program, how you're going to be reimbursed for that. Um, so two, two resources, uh, one will be the information that I'm going to send along after this, and two, uh, the Department of Labor website, um, they have this, they're the ones administrating that. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve. Yep. The next question was, do property, taxes, do property taxes and school taxes count if owed by business, and can that be used as expenses? Uh, property taxes? I do not believe, I, I do not believe property taxes are included on that. I will have to follow up to confirm that. Um, I've been asked if you're working from home, if you can use if you can use the PPP um, because now it's your place of work. Can you use that um, to pay your mortgage for that? You cannot do that unless you've always worked out of your home. Um, they're going to go back to, again to they're, they're using your previous uh, quarters and uh, last year. You know they're using that information. But on property tax, I have not seen that, so I do not believe so, but I, I'm happy to follow up on that. Okay, great. The next question was, um, you mentioned in the slide that we need to get back to the headcount within 30 days. Last week, the SBA mentioned um, the need, we need to be at full headcount by the end of eight weeks. Was this a change in the regs or just the interpretation? Uh, as with a lot of this, it's been a ch change in the interpretation. Uh, you know, how, how we read things, how we, what we were told, and then how the SBA originally started out, and then how they, they've kind of churned. So um, we, we run into that a lot, unfortunately. Um, that's why we're continuing to try to update our sheets. Um, and our, in our information, uh, the more information we receive after more meetings that we receive with the SBA, um, that sometimes the interpretation is different than what we believe the intent was. And I also have the on the payroll costs for the PPP back on the, on the uh, state, uh, your property taxes. It's only a payment of state or local tax that is assessed on the compensation of the employee. So it's only only what you're paying on the uh, compensation of the employee is eligible. So your regular property tax would not. Okay, great. So we got through the questions that were in the chat room. Um, so I, I'd like to, um, it's, it is 11 o'clock here and we do want to be sensitive to your time, Steve. So um, just wanted to give you the opportunity if there was anything else you'd like to share today. Sure, thank you very much. I appreciate being able to ch uh, the opportunity to speak with you. I know it's a ton of information and, and we'll make sure to do follow-ups. Uh, we're all working on this together. Um, we're, we're doing this nonstop. We're, we're hearing about what's working and what's not working across the country, as you know, uh, the U.S. Chamber, we have seven regional offices across the country, so we're all doing these um, uh, presentations and hearing from you and hearing your questions. We're trying to give this information back to the people that need to make these decisions, the SBA, the Treasury Department. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions, please just 
email your chamber. She'll get me that information, and, and we'll try to follow up. Um, and uh, I wish you the best. I know we're all, it's a tough situation, and uh, we all got to work on this together. Uh, phase four is next, so hopefully they'll make this even better, add some additional things in there. Um, but uh, it is, uh, it's a lot out there, so please, uh, I wish you my best. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, we really appreciate your time today. No problem, anytime. Hopefully I can be able to come and visit you guys uh, soon. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so too. Sounds good. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thanks to everyone.